Now, uh, Carlin, you and I fall on opposite ends of the pessimist optimist spectrum, uh, and the do kings. We? <laughs> yeah, I think we do. Okay. <laughs> maybe, well, maybe deep down inside, we're uh, we're on the same side, but I think uh, externally it manifests itself in different ways. Mm -hmm. But uh, the draft lottery is tomorrow at 5 p.m. The Kings could finish anywhere from first overall for the first time in franchise history, all the way down to seventh overall, which would be disappointing, but not a terrible pick, hopefully, based on what Chris Peters was just telling us. Yeah. Um, but I see a lot of Kings fans uh, online, and I grant you it's a self-selecting sample size. Hmm. Um, I'm seeing a lot of pessimism, whether it's on Reddit or Facebook or Twitter or the, the message boards. Um, and I see a lot of people saying, yeah, brace yourself for number seven. Um, but I wanted to remind people, Carlin, that the Kings' history with the NHL draft lottery is actually not as terrible as one might think. Mm -hmm. um, so it goes back to 1995, the very first draft lottery ever held, and the Kings actually won that lottery. Now, they didn't get the first overall pick because back then you could only move up four spots, but the Kings went from seventh overall to third overall, and they drafted Aki Pateri Berg, who at the time, I believe, was the highest drafted finished player in NHL history. Now, uh, Berg would go on to play, sorry, I'm pulling up his stats here real quick, over 200 games with the Kings, 281 games. He scored 43 points in his five seasons with the Kings. He wound up being traded to Toronto uh, for Adam Mayer and a draft pick that wound up being Michael Camilleri. And if you track Michael Camilleri's trade history through uh, the twists and turns of trade trees, if you've seen Steve Dangle's video on it, um, Aki Ber uh, the K sorry, the Camilleri trade winds up netting the Kings uh, both uh, Justin Williams and Dustin Penner through all the different permutations of trading picks and moving around in the draft. So you could look at it as the Kings winning the first ever NHL draft lottery, resulting in winning the Stanley Cup twice. So exactly. that's, that's yeah. not terrible. That's a long, twisty, windy road. It is. <laughs> to look at it. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to be optimistic here. Um, yeah. So, uh, so that was 1995. Now the draft lottery winds up not impacting the Kings in 96 or 97. They make the playoffs in 98, so they're not in that draft lottery. In 99, they trade away their first round pick in the Ziggy Palfi trade, so no impact there. They make the playoffs in 2000, 2001, and 2002. Uh, 2004, if I'm not mistaken, it doesn't wind up impacting the Kings. That brings us to 2005. Okay. where every team entered a 30-team <laughs> draft lottery. The Kings mm -hmm. wind up taking uh, Andre Kopitar with the number 11 pick. Yep. I'd say that worked out pretty well. There, if you honestly, Jesse, if you look at any pick within the last, I don't know, 15 years, like starting from Kopitar and up, there's no one to be mad about. If they're not number... I wouldn't you know, go that far. Well... <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. There's, it's not that there's no one to be mad about. Let me rephrase that. There's a lot of players to be happy about that were not the I number one a, overall pick. I think a that's lot. a much better way to look at a it. Yeah. Lot. Like, are you mad about Drew Doughty? Not no. At all. Not at all. Are, are you are you mad about? Well, I know we don't we don't we no longer have like a Tanner Pearson or a Derek Forbert, but were you mad about that? No. Are you mad about Adrian Kempe? No. Are you mad about Rasmus Kupari? Are you mad about Gabe Velarde? No. I, so I, I'm sorry. I got to push back on the Forbert one only because Tarasenko was taken right after him. So that okay, one could have okay, turned okay, out. Okay, okay, okay. That might be a little bit. <laughs> but, but no. But your but point is well taken. <laughs> there is so much positivity to be taken from the draft in general. You're getting yeah. a good crop of players to choose from in general. So the fact that people put so much emphasis on the number one overall, a team's not doomed because of it. In fact, there are some teams that have been doomed because of it and they've been given the number one overall pick and look where they are so there's so much positivity like i guess i do i am the pe or the yeah, optimist so you're the optimist yeah, i am the optimist <laughs> All right. I, am. Yeah. I mean obviously the most recent experience with the lottery last season was disappointing um for king's fans because they dropped down to fifth but you know i think everybody's perfectly happy with the pick of alex turcott um of course. going Going back two seasons to the 2017 draft, the Kings again dropped down to 11, um, but they wind up with Gabe Velarde. Are we and mad about just it? Like, just like no. the Cop I'm not. Just like the Kopitar pick, I think it, you know, the Kings prosper as a result of a player who should have gone higher in the draft falling to them. Now with Velarde, obviously, there were the health questions and probably a lot of teams passed on him because of them with, with Kopitar. I think, honestly, it was just because he was from Slovenia, and the, I don't think there had been a Slovenian hockey player at that, or professional hockey player at that point. But either way, to your point, it just goes to show that 
talented players can, can come at any pick in the draft. Dustin Brown was 13th overall. Um, I think Jeff Carter was also, uh, no, he couldn't have been 11th, but I think he might have been 13th. Um, Drew Doughty was second. Jonathan Quick was, what, a third-round pick. Um, Kyle Clifford was a second-round pick. Trevor Lewis was a first-round pick. So, you know, it just goes to show you need to build a franchise, not just rely on that first overall pick. Having said that, I would be very excited, Carlin, if the Kings got the first overall pick tomorrow. I mean, after hearing what Chris Peters had to say, I'd be pretty excited, too, honestly. Yeah. And he's and he's one of those players, too, that he, say if you are you're already stacked at that position and maybe you don't need that kind of depth, you still go with Lafreniere. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's yeah, wow. Yeah, it'd be special if if, I mean, if the Kings got that and were able to pick him. Yeah, everybody knows about the Kings uh, defensive and goaltending and center depth on the wing. I guess you've got Kaliev, who's very exciting, and you've got uh, Fagamo. But other than that, you know, I think most of us are relying on players to transition to wing from center, mm -hmm. whether it's, you know, Jared Anderson Dolan or Akil Thomas or maybe a Velarde or a Madden or a Turcotte, one of those guys. They have a ton of center depth. Other than Luke Robitaille, I'm not sure that the Kings have ever really had like an elite world class. I'm sure someone is screaming at me right now as I say this, but yeah. Another I mean, left winger to do. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, there's a ton of like Granado, Sandstrom's, Curry's, Justin Williams, Dustin Brown, right? Really good top tier wingers, but not like, you know, top 100 players in NHL history kind of, uh, kind he of elite talent another, at the he wing. Could be like another Luke Robitaille. For, yeah, yeah. I mean, hopefully. Yeah. So, anyway, that is the history of the uh, LA Kings with the NHL draft lottery.